Hello, video number three. This is where our last video ended. We found out how to find critical numbers, critical points, if you want to call them that. Places where your derivative is either equal to zero or where your derivative is undefined. Now let's look at an example. The function is x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. Let's find out where the derivative is equal to zero at and possibly where the derivative is undefined at. First off, we need to take this derivative using what method? We'll be using the product rule. We have two functions multiplied. We have the x and the root. The x function's derivative is 1. So you then multiply that by the root function. Then you take the derivative of the root function and you multiply it by the x. That's the product rule. And the things that are colored there, they're the derivatives of both uh, the red, blue one is the derivative of the first function and the red one is the derivative of the second function. If you have something that's raised to the half power, whatever the function might be, its derivative is one half that function to the negative one half power. And that's how I rewrote it in radical notation. And then uh, chain rule says, wait, don't stop there. Derivative of the inside, got to multiply by that as well. So that is our derivative. It is our job then to find out where this derivative is equal to zero at, where this derivative is undefined at. It's going to start with some algebra. We have to simplify this. How? First term, nothing really we can do with that. One times the root is just the root. On the second term, hopefully you see that there's some twos that can cancel. And then with those x's, we can multiply them. And we can put that in the numerator. So here's the simplified form of our derivative. Looks great. But we still can't look at it and just know exactly when it's equal to zero or when it's undefined. Well, we might be able to find out where it's undefined at right now. But um, what we're going to do is, is make this a single fraction. We have a fraction and we have this root function. Um, we're going to make this into a single fraction. Take the root function and put a 1 underneath it, basically, and multiply both the top and bottom by that denominator of root. 1 minus x squared, but if you got a root times itself, you just get what's underneath. So basically, the numerator of our first fraction function there is just what's underneath the root. And then we can then combine it with the second numerator. And then we have that all over that common denominator now. This is almost the most simplified version of our derivative. Hopefully you can see that we can take those two x squares, they're both negative x squares, and combine them. We now have the simplified version of the derivative. Whew. All right. What's nice about this is that you have a fraction. And so if we're trying to find where a fraction is equal to zero, we focus on the numerator. Set it equal to zero. 1 minus 2x squared equals zero means that 2x squared is equal to 1, x squared is equal to a half, plus or minus the square root of a half. That might look familiar. Take some trig. Okay, the square root of a half is our friend root 2 over 2. What you get when you plug in pi over 4 into sine or cosine. All right, plus or minus. Please don't forget the plus or minus. If you're trying to solve an equation and your action is to take the square root of both sides, there's a plus or minus that comes into play. All right, great. And so back to our derivative. Numerator equals zero means the derivative is zero. Denominator equals zero means that the derivative is undefined. Okay. So rad one minus x squared equals zero. We square both sides this time. And we get that x is plus or minus one. With these x's, though, we got to double check whether or not these are even in the original domain of our function. They're not in the domain of our derivative, but are they in the domain of our function? What is the domain of our function? Go back to the original function. What's the, are you, is it okay to plug a 1 in? Is that in your domain? Is it okay to plug a negative 1 in? Is that in your domain? Well, yeah, both of them are, right? There's nothing wrong with taking the square root of 0. It'll be 0. It's when that thing is in a denominator that it brings in the drama. And so, yes. We want all x's between minus 1 and 1, including minus 1 and 1. So these are possible x values. They're in the domain, and they, they then cause our derivative to be undefined. So we have our critical points. 
for this question. Plus or minus one, plus or minus root two over two. All right, that's the end of that question. Um, let's go ahead and end the video now. I don't wanna make this video too long. In the next video, we then launch into how to find absolute max or absolute minimum values. We'll later come back to local. Okay, local definitely starts here, but even absolute maximum starts here. Finding critical points is step one in the process. We're gonna switch gears now though and go to absolute in the next video. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakai Rimmer. Please like and subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Uh, be sure to put the link down below. Take care.